My name is Candace Antique, and I am an artist. I'm a singer, songwriter, musician, and producer. Let's go. 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 let us feel like we need to emulate the Eurocentric standards of beauty. And the song came to me immediately, like how would I affirm the idea of nappy hair for a generation of young girls? There's a line in the song that says, put your crown on. And when I look at how we've worn our hair in the past, when you look at really old photographs of African women and men, um, our hair looked like art. It looked like sculptures on top of our heads. Um, it looked like we were wearing crowns um, because our hair is so flexible, it's so malleable, it's, um, it's almost like clay that we can put it into any mold that we want. Our hair, our hair comes out of our crown chakra, so there's energy um, that comes out of that. And so our hair is, is really our crown. It's our antenna, it's our connection to um, ourselves as artistic beings um, and ourselves as divine beings. Um, it's our connection to the divine. The first time I went natural was about 15 years ago in college in San Diego and I felt like I was the blackest thing walking anywhere. My whole life, so I, I'm from the Caribbean, and my whole life we have, um, my mom kept my hair natural. I first decided to wear my hair natural when I was about 15. Um, I really couldn't afford to keep going to the shop. My mother didn't know how to do hair when I was a little girl. Um, so that was always a rough challenge. And so I, I started to learn how to do my own hair, actually. So I started playing around with afros, uh, playing around with twist outs, and learning how to braid my own hair. And I started deciding to wear my hair natural because I was like a weave fanatic. Um, and it got so bad that like I wouldn't have money for public transportation, but I would have like $400 in my head. When I was 18, I read a study about black women who had had their hair permed for their entire lives. Autopsies were performed on them after their deaths and a layer of chemical was found under their scalps. And the study was about the ramifications of having that chemical remain in their body unprocessed um, and how that might have affected their health and quality of life. And since I was legally an adult, my mom couldn't force me to continue perming my hair and I stopped. I'm a black girl, thick and stack girl, made from scratch girl, I'm the unmatched girl. First time that I felt shame about my hair um, was probably my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, I grew up getting my hair straightened from the time I was a child. Right before the first day of school in middle school, the first day of school at a new school, um, I, my mom permed my hair and it all fell out in the bathtub. So I was bald, like I had like, my hairline was back here. Um, and uh, so the humiliation of that, and I just remember thinking to myself, I'm, why? Do we do this to ourselves? I will never do this again. She was like, girl, what's wrong with your hair? What you doing to your hair? It's all knotted and stuff, and is it clean? And so there was all these adverse reactions, which is really interesting, because now everywhere I go, it's your hair so beautiful, your hair so beautiful. And for years, my dad didn't think my locks were mine. But yeah, when I first started my locks, my family was not with it <laughs> at all. I felt a lot of joy in seeing what my hair actually looked like. I had never seen it natural. I didn't know what it looked like. Um, so it was super empowering and, um, and I never looked back. When I started wearing my hair natural, my family had, um, the reaction wasn't really positive um, because, you know, still dealing with some colonized mind states and they called me a hippie and everything above. Thankfully, one of my older sisters, Doris, had gone natural before me and she had already started locks. So she would come up and braid my hair or twist my hair. Um, and she was kind of the only person in my family that uh, made me feel pretty about having natural hair. Um, wearing my hair natural, I feel more confident 
in myself. I feel like I'm not hiding um, anything about me. People treat me entirely differently when my hair is natural. When my hair is natural, I get um, people perceiving me as much more serious, um, as a little bit older, uh, as somebody really not to mess with. <laughs> um, when my hair is straight, it, I seem to be treated a little bit more playfully. There is definitely a discrepancy on how I get treated, whether my hair is, if my hair is straight or if it's in its natural state. Um, sometimes I do wear a weave, I do wear protective styles, and I notice that I get taken more seriously at work, even among black people. The saddest thing is like, when I'm natural, I get more play than when I have like, weave or <laughs> braids in my hair. But it helps me like separate like the real from the fake. I think anytime a guy has ever hit on me, it's always started with, oh, your hair is really nice. I like your locks. So I always wonder what's coming next after how long you've been growing your locks. But um, as an artist, it's very much so um, like my costume. Corporate America was also the place where I figured out no matter where I'm at, I'm going to be like uber African. Like it doesn't matter if I'm in a boardroom or if I'm on the continent, this is what it is and you can take it or leave it. So I think going natural also gave me a deep sense of self and like how relentless I would be with that sense of self. And my interactions with people have changed. Like, um, especially when I'm interacting with other people of color, they'll see my hair and there's like a different level of respect that they give me, I've noticed. Um, when I'm dealing with um, non-people of color, I do notice that there's some um, intimidation or a little bit of fear there because um, you know hair is a, a disguise hair can be disarming we got that magic hair that just that water hair that braid and twist hair fist up resist hair defies gravity don't need no vanity wash and go all your love wash me flow pat my fro i think that uh black women's hair is political it always has been i think my journey with body politics started with my hair. Um, I didn't think, I never thought about being dark skinned. I didn't too much worry about being like a plus size woman. But like when I went natural, everything else came up with it. So it was like, oh, I'm natural. Oh, I'm dark skinned. Oh, I'm plus size all at once. I think that when at least for me as a black woman, when I, because I wear my hair natural, and I think that when we do, it's a signal that says that um, I am my own person and that um, I don't define myself based on anyone else's standard of beauty other than my own. Throughout like American history, people fear what they don't understand. I don't know too many people that aren't black that understand black girl hair. Um, I remember one of the pivotal moments for me was um, a friend of mine from school, her name was Angel, um, I still talk to her here and there, um, and she, uh, she had what we would call in our, in our colonized minds, every black girl knows this term, good hair, um, and so she had what people would consider good hair. And um, I remember saying to her, I was like, man, you're so lucky you have good hair. And she said, what does that mean? What is good hair? And I said, hair that's not nappy. And she said, why is nappy hair bad? And I didn't have an answer. Catch your fro, 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 catch your fro. Shake your dress, 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 shake your dress. Any time that we take a stand for ourselves, any time we um, decide to love ourselves, it's kind of, it's a revolution. In a, in a world that teaches you to hate yourself, self-love is revolutionary. And um, we've been taught that our hair is not okay. And everybody around us has been taught that our hair is not okay. So when you take that step and you wear it in its natural form, the way it is, um, a way, the way that you like it, a lot of people feel like that is physical violence against them. I think black women's hair is political for various reasons. The most blaring example for me at this moment is uh, 
it's political because it is an acceptance of who we are. And I think for so many years, we've been pushed away from who we are because once we accept who we are and live in integrity with who we are, there's really no stopping us. Uh, what I would tell other little girls about their hair is natural hair um, is a reflection of self-love and cultural pride. It's better for our environment. It's better for um, our group economics as a whole. Um, and it really is better for your self-esteem because at the end of the day, you're gonna have to take all those extensions or whatever out of your hair and you're gonna have to be left with your natural hair 